Rowley Conservation Commission. This meeting of the Rowley Conservation Commission is hereby called to order under authority of MGL Chapter 131, Section 40, also the Town of Rowley's Wetlands Protection Bylaw and the Stormwater Management and Erosion Control Bylaw. I will now call the attendance in order to establish the order. David DeMonico? Present. Bob Garner? Here. Judy Keyes? Here. Sam Strife? Here. Kurt Turner? Here. Doug Watson? Here. <coughs> and we have a quorum present, Mr. Chairman. Ready. Um, I think we will, since it is 7.35, and we have a 7.35 item, I think we will hold our administrative discussion until the end of the meeting. And um, first item on the agenda is the 735 item, the Eagle Scout Project presentation by Scout Eric Nintala. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Eric, welcome. And if you would like to show us what you have in mind, right. we'd be pleased to hear it. So my Eagle Scout Project? Yeah, I'll operate it. The um, participation purpose, the purpose of my project is to build signs, two signs, for the open spaces and um, on Wethersfield Street next to Mill River and Rally. And after that, I'll be building, um, oh, I'll be making a baseline report on each area. And the purpose of it is to um, let the um, areas of Rally be known and mark them on the map. And Sure, you guys don't have based on document report, right? So I don't think I need to describe it. No, okay. that's okay. Yeah, but we have a viewing audience tonight, Eric, who, <laughs> who might profit <laughs> from uh, hearing you explaining a little bit about your project. All right. Well, a baseline um, document report is a um, it consists of maps, narratives, photographs that tell the um, that portray the conditions of each land and like. The purpose of it is to um, let the <coughs> landowners know like their condition, uh, items, the condition of their lands, and like their state, and like their resources. So we're just letting them know what's in it. Now, uh, well, maybe this is where we start, but let's just for the for the viewing audience also. Can you just give us an idea of where exactly on Weathersfield this is? And I have the. Um, image okay. right there that's highlighted. So it is, um, as I understand it, it's just past, if you're uh, westbound, you're just past the second bridge. Is yeah. that right? Taylor yeah. Bridge. Mill River? Yes. The Mill River Bridge, right? Yeah. It's called yeah. the Taylor Bridge. It's called the Taylor Bridge? No. Okay. Sometimes. Historians that say that is apparently um, not the correct <laughs> <laughs> area where the tailors used to reside. No. So, okay. Uh, but right. it's Thank you, Eric. So please proceed. And the signs, each sign will be about two, four feet long and four feet on posts. And two boards will be about two feet wide by eight. And I um, wasn't really sure about, um, but you think that when um, I need to put on the signs because okay. I'm not really sure about that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll give you some feedback on that. Okay. And for the leadership, I will, I'm thinking I'm getting at least at least six people, but um, if a lot of kids um volunteer for help, I'll get most nine people, and um, once I get those amount of people, I'll get about um split them to three groups. Two groups will be doing signs, and one group will be doing surveying, and um, where we will be <coughs> going to um, the areas, choosing points, and at each point we'll be um, photographing each um, north, south, east, and west. So you will be surveying what exactly the areas that you're going to be doing the report on? Yeah, we'll be choosing a point at the areas. And we will be going that one and just taking pictures. Yeah, for the commission's um, clarification, these are the, or this is the acreage that the Bank of New England donated to the Raleigh Conservation Commission uh, that used to be uh, the extent of a cornfield that was farmed along, along uh, Weathersfield Street um, between the Mill River and the intersection with Hillside, but on the Left western, uh, west the western or, or north northwestern side of uh, the left is your street. outbound towards yes. 95. Yeah. Yeah. 
I love your images there. Those are great. <laughs> Thank you. And materials I would need would be um, all wood would have to be um, pressure treated, and two four by four wooden posts, one by three wooden boards, a gallon of oil-based stains, and <coughs> screws and bolts about a pound. Supplies: two bags of park garbage bags, safety glasses, working gloves, lined paper. The um, bags are just for the um, because probably be cleaning some things and safety glasses, working gloves, safety, and fine paper which we use for documenting. Tools I would need would be screw guns, post hole diggers, measuring tapes. You can read the list. <laughs> and first permission, I do need permission <coughs> for this, but I got the uh, which I have in my folder right here if you'd like to see. When are you going to do this? Sometime in the spring, but um, hopefully... Uh, Without snow, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But pretty much is um, it's going to get approved. Spring. In Later come spring, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to want to be out there. Have mm -hmm. you determined how deep you're going to dig the post holes? Uh, not, I'd say about a foot. I'd, I'd recommend you just touch base with a building inspector. And usually, they require four feet okay. deep because of frost heaving and other things. And those are pretty tall signs and, and mm -hmm. um, fill with you know crushed rock or something like that. To stabilize it. Okay. <coughs> and cost estimate, I um, rounded it to thirty two hundred thirty dollars. But um, I am. I think I'm going to the Yankee Pine Lumber for some donations, so I'll take it down a bit. Logistics for transportation. Transportation will be from myself and the helpers who can drive will be required to help out with transportation materials also. And they also have to um, join the people who can't drive. Safety issues. Safety issues are most likely to be the saws or the um, sharp tools being used. Also, when we um, do the uh, documentation, when we walk around the areas, there might be mosquitoes path and other pests and poison ivy and other poisonous plants. That's it. Okay. <coughs> Could I suggest a first aid kit, perhaps, would be good to include in mm -hmm. supplies. Just a basic one. Mm -hmm. that. Good idea. So there are t there are two things that Eric basically wish um, both feedback uh, from the commission and also authorization to uh, proceed with the projects so we can provide a letter of support as well as sign off on his application. But the the first one that was mentioned early on in the presentation was whether anything other than conservation area town of Raleigh, whether there's anything else that the commission might feel um, should be put on the sign. I'm not aware that that particular um, area has any type of um, historic uh, locust name or anything that, that <coughs> goes with it, but I would certainly uh, defer to uh, members of the commission who are longtime Riley residents as to if there is anything, you know, like like we have the Pingree Farm Conservation Area because of the Pingree Farm yeah. having been there. Or Hunsley Hills. Yeah. yeah, or Hunsley Hills, exactly. No name uh, for that. Not that I know of for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think my thought would be just uh, Town of Riley Conservation Area would be sufficient. Um, are you thinking of one board or two? Two. Yeah, we initially had, had thought of two. Okay, so maybe Town of Rowley yeah. Conservation yeah. Area yeah. in the first and the second. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. And is this just going to be on one side of the road? It's no. um, both sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I well, I made the suggestion and I was <laughs> trying to. Um, I know from past experience that I believe when this gets submitted to the um, service review committee at the council level that they like to see a project that they can anticipate has got a fair amount of commitment and organization um, mm -hmm. put into it. So um, kind of figured here that that sign installation, one on each side of the street, because it is that 
portion of Weathersfield Street is flanked by our preserved open space. And then doing the baseline field survey uh, on the side of the uh, donation that came from Bank of New England, that that should you know, provide an adequate amount of both time and organizational skills, as, as well as uh, give back to the community and provide us with some uh, documentation to help us in the long-term uh, management and, and uh, maintaining that open space. <clears throat> Comments from commissioners? I think we certainly support this. Uh, any members of the public wish to be heard about this? Um, I think we certainly support this, um, so we can we can signify that. Um, I think uh, if, if everybody is comfortable with the language that I suggested, we can uh, we can suggest you go with that. So, town of Rowley on the first line and conservation conservation area conservation area on the second. I think. Um, anything else? Anything else we need to add? I don't think so. Eric, thank you very much for the yep. uh, presentation. And if there's any questions in any way we can support you and help you, let us know, okay? Yep. Yeah. Brent, I don't think we need a vote, a formal vote on this, just a signification of support. But what that's, do you think? that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you direct me to yep. sign and generate the support letter. Great. Glad okay. okay. Thank you, Eric. Yep. And thank <coughs> you for doing this for the town. Thank you. Good job. So there'll be a brief uh, pause while, <laughs> while uh, Brent dismantles the electronics. <laughs> What's it to sleep that way? The whiteboard makes a nice screen, actually. It's worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Furniture rearranging before I came to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> All worked out for the best. This is a legal notice of the Rowley Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetland Protection Act, General Laws 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Rowley Wetlands Protection Bylaw. A public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 4th, 2014 at 7.45 p.m. at the Town Hall Annex, 39 Central Street, to consider a notice of intent application filed by Gerald Clear for proposed installation of a beaver deceiver water flow control device at the Wilson Pond outlet within bordering vegetated wetlands and land under water bodies, all at 65 Wilson Pond Lane, map 6, parcel 4, parcel, excuse me, 41, lot 20, and land off Wilson Pond Lane, map 6, parcel 41, lot 29A, owned by Farmhouse, Real, Farmhouse Lane Realty Trust in Raleigh, Mass. No. Uh, Mr. Clear, you're Mr. Clear, I think, please. Yes. Uh, and um, why don't you come on forward and tell us what you have in mind here. We've all reviewed your application, and I know you worked with Brent in, in uh, preparing yeah. it. So give us a summary. Um, pretty much uh, this culvert goes under our driveway and uh, the beavers just continually block it 
and the area floods over, and when we get extreme rain, uh, it, we, we almost get rapids <laughs> over the driveway, and uh, we're concerned that um, uh, if we don't get a permanent solution, we'll, we'll one of these times lose our driveway. And so we figured the deceiver would be uh, the best permanent solution uh, for everybody, including the beavers. <laughs> um, yeah, so it, I mean, it, our property does get pretty flooded, but um, I think our, our biggest concern is the driveway. Looks like the um, device in question consists of a, of a pipe with two boxes. Is that basically the summary of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, one box right at the culvert with the pipe going into it. Yeah. With another box about 20 feet out. Yeah. With the pipe. <coughs> um, well, like, what they call the boxes filters, I guess. <coughs> That's the size of it. Brenda probably better um, describe it than I could. <coughs> on the downstream side or the upstream side? Upstream. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So just to orient the commission a little bit, uh, there are two sets of photographs with a significant amount of snow um, on them. You can see from one of the photographs that there's a large pile of sticks. That is the result of the continuing effort to try and keep the inlet clear uh, due to the beavers' continuing uh, damming activities uh, right, basically right at um, where his uh, granite blocks are that form the edge or curving of the side of his driveway. The actual um, black plastic culvert pipe is inset a little bit. Uh, the beavers have reacted to that by mounding mud and other debris um, and kind of forming sort of a berm of their dam um, offset about a foot to two feet um, out from uh, the granite um, curving. That's the, I guess the best way I can describe it. You know, that granite curving also sort of acts as the head wall. Um, it goes dry? That's from 2007. That is probably the last time in recent memory that it was dry. <laughs> um, if you will recall, 2000, the end of 2007 also happened to be if we didn't get to a declared drought at that particular point mm -hmm. in time, i.e. remember the Emily Lane mm -hmm. <laughs> submittal <laughs> of the stream <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> issue. Um, <clears throat> so that um, was more than likely the last time uh, that that surface area was exposed in recent memory. Although if one goes back and examines uh, utilizing Google Earth and their sliding uh, chronology of uh, going back into uh, ortho aerial photographs, you can see that Wilson Pond actually used to go through a periodic cycle where the extent of impounded water would actually shrink anywhere to 50% to sometimes even down as much of a third of the size yeah. uh, that the pond would be in the spring. So this isn't an issue where it's anticipated that this installation will result in anything, a drawdown anywhere near that significant, although seasonal variation in precipitation may allow the pond to shrink. Um, the idea here is, is mostly, well, as with all <clears throat> water flow control devices, they're not necessarily supposed to, to um, be a detrimental impact to the beaver, but, but they're supposed to allow water to continuously flow and not allow the beavers to take advantage of this type of situation where the driveway of this residence, which is the only access, the only place that emergency vehicles or or that they can um, uh, enter or egress 
their dwelling is basically becomes sort of a berm or a dam and the small opening that is the culvert, uh, which for many years has accommodated the outflow of the pond. The beavers obstructing it, though, cause a problem, and there has been uh, issues where, I think in 2006, we had the washout. Oh, the Mother's Day. The Mother's Day event. They had a significant <coughs> washout where it did start to undermine the integrity of their driveway. Now, the, the good news is, is that their driveway is pretty level, and so when the pond does overflow it, it does sort of sheet disperse across it. But the bad news is, is that it's just a driveway. It doesn't have constructed embankments on either side. So as soon as the water gets off of the paved surface, it immediately hits um, uncompacted earth, regular lawn or whatever, which um, due to velocities and the amount of water has been subject to scouring and erosion. So the idea here is to, um, and this, again, this proposal is from uh, Mr. Skip Lyle of uh, Beaver Deceivers International, which the commission does have experience with his um, sometimes kind of unique designs in that he uh, designed and constructed the uh, beaver deceiver that's on <coughs> Haverhill Street next to the Institution for Savings, uh, which has functioned uh, for a number of years. I believe, I'm going to speculate here because I haven't had a chance to uh, talk to Mr. Lyle, but I believe the reason you're seeing kind of a different design in this instance is that Wilson Pond has a very shallow, uh, gradual slope. There isn't any incised channel or historic channel that would allow depth for what is normally, I would call, a submerged installation, where the pipe is put in the bottom of what used to be the historic stream channel and takes advantage of being submerged and then sometimes has a circular enclosure of the reinforcing wire around it. Again, that's, that's totally submerged. There really isn't a depth, as you can see from that photograph. Images from 2007, it's just a long, uh, gradual slope. <clears throat> and as ex-commissioner Ashworth found out when he fell through the ice trying to find that channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, and also, again, just to explain a little bit, um, this submittal is based and, and acknowledges the fact that anywhere from half to maybe 75% of the installation will be on land that is owned by Farmhouse Realty Trust, right. uh, which is why the application, we do have the signature of one of their trustees, uh, Mr. John Darling, um, and we did uh, make sure to uh, both uh, clearly state in the um, public, publicly advertised legal notice, as well I, as I advised Mr. Clear to actually notify um, a couple of abutters that technically were not abutters by our 100 foot requirement under the Wetlands Protection Act to his property, but were abutters to the farmhouse lane parcel, and also they happen to be the residences on the end of Wilson Pond Lane, whose backyard is directly the shore of the pond. Right, so I was wondering why we get more abutters on there than I would have expected. <laughs> Well, again, I, Mr. Clear made the mistake of coming in and asking me for my <laughs> advice, and I would rather defer to letting as many people who might see this know about it, so that if they did have any concerns or wanted to know what was going on, uh, that they would. Now, I apologize, I don't have a memo of recommendation to the commission. As we'll discuss later on, uh, my administrative duties uh, increased exponentially. <laughs> In the, uh, in the last week, um, so but I did, um, I did want to just uh, suggest for the record now, first off, this project is occurring in two if not three distinct resource areas that the Wetlands Protection Act and our, and our local bylaw recognize. Bordering vegetated wetlands, land under waterways or water bodies, and also bordering land subject to flooding. In the application, we, 
I advise Mr. Clear to make a tentative guesstimate in regards to uh, those resource areas that could possibly be considered that they were being impacted by this. Um, and I'll be honest with you, we just we took a, a rough number and just said 10 square feet of bordering vegetated wetlands right. and approximately 80 square feet of land under uh, water bodies and waterways. <coughs> My professional opinion is that this is kind of a temporary impact because it is not really something that you would consider a permanent installation. The, yes, there are some wooden boxes that then have wire stretched between them, but obviously that should not displace floodwaters, number one. It also should not really detrimentally impact a lot of surface area. Um, probably the only thing you can say is that the pipe sitting on the pond bottom is going to shadow some of that mud where um, grasses and algae may have grown in the past, but that because it's a curved cylinder, that's probably got a very small amount of square footage, square inches it's actually impacting uh, the pond bottom. And to be quite honest with you, the beavers have been disturbing that much more yeah, than right. uh, this installation more than likely okay. will. Uh, so just to express um, what resource areas are potentially impacted. And, and the installation is designed so that even if the beavers do mound material against it, it's open box rectangles, so the water will be able to rise up and go in uh, through the wire um, sides. Uh, again, the idea here is that hopefully the beavers will expend uh, their effort and their energies on the first box that actually protects the culvert inlet and that the box further out where the water will actually mostly be conducted through the pipe will probably not, would hope, not get um, impacted by the beavers uh, trying to, to block it up, and which is the idea of the beaver deceiver, that supposedly you direct the water flow from an area substantially away from where the beavers react to the noise of the running water. Right, right. How long's the pipe? 20 feet? 20 feet. Yeah, 20 feet. I would think that would do it. But I'm not a beaver. <laughs> I guess we'll all find out. <laughs> um, so just um, if the commission wishes me to, I could just briefly kind of review some ideas for um, some of the permitting. You know, okay, sure. And, yeah. uh, conditions. Um, to start off with, removal of the mounted debris that right now um, impedes uh, the flow into the culvert and that would probably have to be done anyway in order to properly install the first wire box right. at, at the culvert inlet. Um, again, because all that material is um, mostly natural uh, woody debris uh, combined with some mud, um, it, uh, I propose that it could be scattered into uh, native undisturbed woods as long as it wasn't mounded or it could be sent to an off-site uh, disposal for, for landscaping debris, which is what it would normally be considered. Uh, I then suggested that a condition would be prefabrication on dry ground with cutting over a tarp uh, to the maximum extent uh, practical uh, so that there's a minimum amount of cutting going on in actual, in the, in the water, so to speak, making an assumption that the pond is probably still going to be relatively high. Uh, I did also suggest that that the inlet be temporarily blocked, say by utilization of hay bales or something, so that no flow would go through it while the construction and removal of the mounted debris. That way stirred up mud or whatever would not be carried downstream. Mm -hmm. okay. But at the same time there would also be erosion control at the outlet end also in case some materials did go through or in the situation where the fact that you kind of have to block the flow and then when you unblock things when it finally gets done that that's going to cause a little bit of a release which may dislodge and move stuff through there if you then have an erosion control line at the outlet end it'll act as sort of a check dam and it'll catch stuff. 
and hopefully also not allow any scouring or dislodge, dislodging of the uh, stream bed at the outlet side. <clears throat> and then the commission does have uh, conditions uh, that we have used in past beaver receiver installations where we ask for documentation of what the area looks like um, pre-installation and then at the time of installation and then, a, and then a monitoring report usually at the end of whatever season is the, is the next season. So say if this is installed in the spring, we would ask for a monitoring report to be submitted in the fall at the end of the growing season to see how, hopefully to see that things have, uh, any vegetation that was impacted or disturbed has grown back in just to make sure that things are fine. You would anticipate doing this in this spring? Yeah, uh, this, the sooner the better because the water levels are mm -hmm. almost up at the driveway right now. And we're going to get a big melt. Yes. You know, you know, a lot of snow. So, you know. Yeah. And then the other, um, in the past, the commission has also allowed uh, <coughs> maintain, maintenance and monitoring uh, to be an ongoing perpetual condition, as well as um, provided for an opportunity to review the performance of the installation and to consider um, possible modifications. In other words, if it needs to be tweaked, somehow adjusted, you would not have to file a new permit application under the terms of this issued order. You'd be able to come back to the commission and just discuss what the modifications are and more than likely the commission would allow you to, to consult with me and would more than likely allow me to make a determination as to whether it's just a minor or whether it's something right. that really needs to come before the commission if there's like a major adjustment proposed right. or something. Without filing a new notice of intent mm -hmm. or right. anything like yes. that. Recognizing that site-specific installation, as well as our nice little flat-tailed, four-footed little guys, sometimes have their own idea about how the procedure should work. There aren't usually major modifications that need to be made, though, typically in these things. No, so no, but there so might. The, the reason I put that in there is just in case we find that just having one 20-foot pipe going out to a box mm -hmm. turns out not to be adequate and they need to consider the possibility of maybe two. Mm -hmm. Of a 20-footer going in one direction and mm -hmm. another 20-footer going in the other direction okay. to provide um, proper proper flow going through. Sure. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not saying that that is on a need to be done. Right. I'm just suggesting that that might be an anticipated situation that this would allow uh, flexibility to uh, Mr. to clear. Hey, you're going to have to clean it too. Well, that's why I said ongoing maintenance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ongoing maintenance. And, and again, in, in the case of the Institution for Savings, they usually check in with me when they anticipate doing something. They just <laughs> let me know, and that also allows me to check in with them as to how it's working. And the fish in Wilson Pond? Um, I think you'll. There are some small. There are some small stuff in there. Yeah. Um, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I'm just curious. Yeah. No. I have seen. Is there a way to memorialize the high water mark, current high water mark, on what I presume is the western edge of the pond? Uh, with where the land is is owned by, I presume Farmhouse Lane Realty Trust. The reason I the old the old Farm Road crossing. No, just. Oh, I'm, I guess I'm not clear on which. I when you say the western side, I which is I assume you're the standing side at, the, the at the outlet. This way. <coughs> if you're you looking at Wilson the, Pond, you're facing what southish. Uh, yeah, like so. South the west is, is the other side the of the right, pond. Yeah. Um, so this end, from this picture. Yeah. The other end from so the So the upper end. The, the side, no, not the other end. Oh, the the western side, side of the pond. Western side. Uh, uh, for that matter, the eastern side, too. I think it would be east helpful. Side, I see. The presumption that this is going to permanently lower, reasonably permanently lower the uh, 
the level of the pond. Um, I assume this is the west. This is this is the existing Wilson Pond Lane. Okay, and this, this is, is Mr. Right up, property. Okay. So yes. over here, the past here and yeah, here. Yeah, so that's that's farmhouse. If, if we could mark in some way the level of the level of the water, and the reason I say that is because if um, John Darling ever gets to develop this area, and he has access from one of the cul-de-sacs and way back here, mm -hmm. um, that the distance from the high water mark. When you have a gradually sloping pond ditch, it's not going to be any bank easily discernible. So it would be actually, the vegetation is probably going to show you because Wilson Pond, where yeah, where it hasn't been much described. manicured or whatever, actually has good growth of alders yeah. along it. So it, it actually has a, a fairly good substantial um, border. You mean um, over here? Yes. Yes. Well, let me go back to the days when that was fully wooded, and they went in there and they clear cut all that. So that's happened once, and they, you know, probably they probably couldn't get away with it now because now there are homes all over the place. But, but um, that used to be wooded right up to the edge of that pond. I, I don't, I don't doubt it. I, the photographs I have seen seem to indicate that there's sort of a, a partially a field over there, and I thought someone told me at one point in time that horses were. Yeah. They were pastured horses. over there. Yeah, they were, but that was after it was clear cut, I think. Oh yeah, well yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. But um, so it so it ha yes, it has gone through a transition of different cover types. So I think it would be. I just think it would be useful to know where the high water mark is of the pond, and maybe the alders can be used at that, but they may disappear at some point. Um, and because it depends on your your buffer zone determinations in the future. Right. You can kick me under the table, but all we have to do is have a surveyor shoot the upper elevation of the edge of his driveway and take it across. <laughs> You know, I'm not familiar with that technology, but because we know that that's where the water is. Yeah, that hasn't, that's not going anywhere, at least we don't know. It'd be useful to do that. Then. Yeah, that's an interesting point. All right, you folks are here on this, right? Yes. Anything you'd like to add? Would you like oh, to, just to a short comment. Uh, Could you just identify yourselves for us so I'm we know who you are? Paul Whitney, this is my wife Dorothy. We okay. live at 75 Wilson Pond Lane. Okay. And uh, unless something is done to improve the outflow from the pond, uh, we're in danger of losing half a dozen or so maple trees on the pond side of our property. Okay. Uh, 75 is. Yeah. It's the first house down from the old farmhouse. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm getting. Yeah, let me just look and see if I can that old pull old out one of the abutter maps here. Mm -hmm. So you basically you're having the same problem the clears are having, is that when out outflow is impeded. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a. Uh, this is Mr. Clear's property. This is the next property down, and this would be then the second house down okay. from the, uh, Mr. Clear's driveway near Sex Wilson Farm. Yep, yep, that looks like the same sketch. So this dark area is Mr. Clear, and Brent thinks yeah. this one is. Well, according to the assessor's records, that's um, that's the assessor's designation for 75 Wilson Farm. Right. So the, the, this is a Google map of the property. My property lines are approximately in. Yep. Looks Mr. The Clear's property is it would be here. Yep. So if you turn it this way, it would looks be like here. Yep. Yeah. There we go. We've got that little. Yep. That goes uh, like this, and this is Wilson Pond Lane. Yes, Wilson yeah. Pond Lane. Yeah. 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 These are my oh, property sorry. lines. And yeah, this is the pond over yeah. here. Uh, it, well, here. Yeah. The pond, and this this is the pond here. Yep. It has been flooded up. This high mm -hmm. on occasion, and you can see these green, light green dots. Mm -hmm. Those are maple trees that, if the water level does get this high, mm -hmm. the um, bases are underwater and I will lose them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the basic purpose of this project is to try to um, provide a consistent outflow for Wilson Pond. It's, yeah, that's it's the beavers that are causing the biggest impe impediment to that. Yes. So. And, and because and because this isn't changing Mr. Clear's elevation of his inlet, right. it's just to establish unrestricted flow to it. Right. The hope is that the pond will go back to its seasonal variation. Yeah, instead of going 
to right instead of being yeah. instead of being quote unquote above its normal <coughs> seasonal capacity right. because of the, the beavers impeding the outflow. Are the beavers not those maple trees at all? Not those maples, no. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they um they uh, they almost went through a well off. Well, I did play why at all the trees after that. No harm. Yeah. Not all you can do. They have yeah. taken a couple of the smaller saplings out farther from our property. Mm -hmm. but, uh, they haven't attacked the, uh, those maples <coughs> that I'm talking about are probably 30 years so well, old, 50, 60 feet. You know, the hope is that they'll decide this just isn't a good yeah, place to build a dam and go find someone else to annoy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, that's the hope in yeah. the yard to make it happen. We did. We have lost. Mm -hmm. We've just about lost the maple from the flooding. Mm -hmm. The one up front is it looks at least half dead now. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's underwater. Yeah. All right. Any other comments from commissioners? Or right. Yes. Um, on the outflow side, we were talking about. Uh, um, Silt fencing or something? Well, like uh, either hay bales yeah. or straw wattle. Are you or, thinking or of box like type of thing? Stake no, down? actually just kind of a horseshoe. Or, yeah. Just yeah, a horseshoe. Same just, type again, just thing. to kind of catch stuff. Yeah. But is also, there water deep enough there or is it too deep? You know, I haven't, un unfortunately, I haven't been to the site. Those pictures were taken January 27th yeah. and, you know, the snow cover has shrunk a little bit, but hasn't substantially subsided or yeah. whatever. My concern is obviously in the spring, I know it's getting up. Well, I think we can field the just it. What, what yeah. I was going to propose here is that I would yeah. write our normal type of condition for the inspection of the erosion control to be contingent on kind of field placement. Yep, yep. You know. that's what I was going to suggest is just, you know, <coughs> you don't know what's going to, what it's going to be like out there until you get out there. And, you don't and know that could change everything. You so. don't know how deep it's going to be. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other comments or questions for the commissioners? Anything else you folks would like to add? Um, so this is a notice of intent. Yes. So and DEP has also issued a final number, and DEP had no uh, comments. In oh, good. Okay. To the application. That's actually a question I should ask, but yeah. <coughs> um, so I think what I would need is a motion to close the hearing. No. And what else? A issue an order of conditions, conditions. with um, with the special conditions relevant to the installation of the beaver deceiver as discussed. Yeah. Okay. So do I have that motion? So moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? And the motion carries. So good luck with the beavers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there have been years we have thought we should be renamed the Beaver Commission yeah. as opposed to the Conservation <laughs> Commission. It comes up a lot in this town. Uh, okay. You see this down the lane, you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> self-installed one that had a smaller diameter black culvert go into the inlet and of his culvert. And the problem with that, it didn't have any protection on either mm -hmm. end. So the beavers just packed mud and sticks up, you know. around the now the now restricted inlet opening of his driveway culvert, right. as well as pushed mud up and buried in almost the entire length of the black pipe sitting on the pond bottom because there wasn't anything to keep them away from, from the inlet of that one. It would be interesting if this design works. It's not the same as the other people you see, but I guess everyone's different. Everyone's well, different. But I think you did see that I had sent you yeah. a picture yeah. of... It has the same... He has utilized that before um, right. 
the same principle. Right? Yeah. Totally the same principle. It's yeah. just a little bit different to figure out. What are you charges for all that? Hmm. I could find out. Um, <coughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it was somewhere between the six hundred to a thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. it, I know he prices based on the in, his anticipated idea of the materials, and and since he's done quite a few of them, he usually has a pretty good judgment of how long it's going to take him. To so he designs them and builds them. Yes, yes. Uh, he's actually um, he was nice enough to let me volunteer on one of his installations in Georgetown before I came to work for this commission. So I actually got some experience of uh, working on. Thought just occurred to me. How do they anchor the baskets? Is it drives the it, it drives the stakes down into the like how deep? I mean, just six feet, five, six feet. No, the, the one I worked on, yeah, they were driven at least at least four feet in because mm -hmm. basically you used, used fence posts, you used cedar okay. cedar fence posts and drove them down in, and then hammered or stapled the wire. Mm -hmm. What's the diameter of the pipe in this instance? Oh, it was either 18 or 18, 20, 20 inches, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say 18, I think, under his driveway. Yeah. Pretty big. Right, which is why when it wasn't being impeded by the beavers, there didn't seem to be an issue with the seasonal fluctuations mm -hmm. of yeah, it wasn't a problem with too small a call. As soon as they Probably started, yeah, as soon as they started impacting it, then he started having uh, the issues of it overwashing and, uh, and uh, un undermining his drive. What's the diameter of the beaver to see the pipe? I honestly don't know. Every 12? Yeah. I thought I saw 12. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in that. Yeah. 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 I think they just said it's going to be 12 inch diameter, 20 feet long. Yeah. And, and yeah. smooth wall, too. You get smooth wall. So that any loose sticks yeah. don't yes. catch yeah. to the ribs. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you don't want anything less than 12 anyways because it's well, right. jammed in there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's also why I express to kind of leave it a little open-ended in case there oh, yeah. needs to be the provision of a second. No, that's a second. Uh, right. Right. Mm. Makes sense. All right. That's interesting. <clears throat> this is the 8 o'clock item. Uh, continued notice of intent for land off Daniels Road, Map 9, Parcel 23, Tompkins Dish Ardens Trust, Bruce Tompkins Trustee. I'm reading from a letter received by the Commission on March 4th, 2014 from John J. DeCoulis. Dear Mr. Bazelak and Con Conservation Commission members, kindly continue the notice of intent for land off Daniels Road, Map 9, Parcel 23. Tompkin Desjardins Trust, Ruth Tompkins Trustee, to your March 25th, 2014 meeting. I plan to submit the response to the Horsley Witten peer review early next week. Thank you, Mr. DeCoulis. So, um, we were talking about this before you arrived, Dave. Um, you, we have a potential quorum problem. If, because um, I can't be here next time, and unless you review the Minutes and DVD in the uh, in the in the manner required by the Mullen case, we won't have a quorum that can uh, can hear that presentation. Um, now, I have I have, my thought on this is this matter has been before us twelve times. Thank you. And of which three have been substantive, the first three, and of which the remaining nine have been continuances. Um, I suppose at some point he will finish this, but I'm not confident that it will be this next meeting. So my thought is that rather than put you to the effort of doing that, continue this six weeks instead of three. That's just my thought. That preserves our option of having you fill in the blank. If I would still be able to fill. Yeah, blank. Well, no, I, 
wouldn't. I wouldn't have to. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have to yeah. because it wouldn't have had a yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you're absent when it's just a straight continuance, but it wouldn't even no be a continuance. See, what I'm saying is, it's just put it on for six weeks from now. Well, but I need to contact him and get his permission and have him document that. I, I, don't, think so. I don't think he gets to well, choose his continuance. Yeah. Yeah. He has to request a continuance, but it has it's up to us yeah, to set our agendas. Kind of that's, that's my thought. Yeah. If he tries to continue, he'll probably because otherwise, them. otherwise he's running our agenda. Well, this well in a, in a sense they do, which is why some commissions don't make it a policy that unless they actually submit the information, they do not get agenda placement. But the commission, when he has specifically requested continuous to a certain meeting, mm -hmm. you, unless you're going to oh, you close said. the hearing process yeah. and make a decision, you know, based on what information has been so far submitted, you, you won't, as soon as the commission steps in without the applicant's permission, a 21-day clock starts. So because he asked for a specific right. time frame, Right, because he asked for a specific date, and I'm not saying that he wouldn't be amenable, but I'm saying it would be in our best interest to make sure that we explain to him and get him in writing to right. request a continuance based on understand. the possible lack of a, obviously, on, lots right. of a quorum is certainly in his interest here because, I mean, that just, just shoots his whole application Preservation process. of a quorum, you mean, yeah. No, I agree. Well, and of course, our alternative is to deny his request for a continuance. <laughs> After all, we have that power. Right. In which case, we vote and reject because he hasn't right. presented us a you know, completed application. So he clearly wouldn't want that. So, so nor do I believe we have anything even resembling what would possibly be considered grounds for issuing a denial. Oh, well, other than the 12 <laughs> continuances. Well, I mean, there, there's nothing in the regulations that says you mm, I don't shouldn't be patient with, with an applicant. We've been pretty patient. Slowed. Well, I, I understand that. And I think he's yeah. set an all-time record here. He is certainly going for it, yes. <laughs> when I saw that today, I that's the first thing I thought of. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm so glad you brought it up. Well, so why don't we do this? What I would suggest is we vote to continue it six weeks with his permission. If he doesn't want his permission to be granted, then we will make it the three weeks he wants. Okay. And Dave, you will have to um, do that. I'd suggest you wait till towards the end of the three-week period to <laughs> spend your time, though, because... Well, there's another alternative, too, I think. What's that? That we could... Um, have them do a complete review of the whole thing so that mm. which would serve as a refresher for the rest of us because it's been so long since those three substantive meetings took place <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, to bring David up to speed as if it were an original thing and and um, and you know it would save going through the, that other rigmarole but it creates a new rigmarole yeah. um, mm -hmm. and uh, well, and the other thing is, as Sam said, this probably won't be the last meeting, this next one. And, and there'll probably be adjustments that we then have to consider. Yeah, I apologize for not having draft minutes, but let, let me just refresh for the Commission's consideration in this, that most of that particular July 9th meeting was spent in trying to explain to him why his fee submittal didn't adhere or didn't express the uh, required specificity in his project in order for the fee calculation to be done. Why the, <coughs> why the supposed um, taking one plan sheet with everything on it and changing it to three plan sheets that basically all the project activities were still condensed on one sheet and the other sheet was existing conditions, which of course showed absolutely nothing of the proposed project activities. Why that was not quite exactly what the commission had expressed to his associate, Mr. Bernard, from the previous m meeting. So to be quite honest with you, the approximately half an hour to 45 minutes 
of that meeting were actually mostly trying to bring Mr. DeCoulis, because he hadn't been present at the previous meeting, up to, quote unquote, where the commission's real desire for documentation, i.e. Um, different activities separated on different plan sheets in order to make the project more understandable, as well as encouraging him to come in and sit down with me to go over the specific criteria of the fee structure and so that his activities could be expressed in a, in a manner that would allow one to ascertain what the, what the assessment of the fee should uh, actually be. Is this going to be an audio uh, minutes or? Well, minutes? I have a DVD for you to yeah, take. Yeah, DVD. Where you can so what I'm not only is, see it as well as listen to it. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is the majority of that recap is going to be pretty boring. Yeah, pretty irrelevant. <laughs> well, it's yeah, pretty it irrelevant. wasn't really a discussion <laughs> well, of the, the you know, criteria yeah. of his no, project, yeah, so to about speak. The fees. But it was a yeah. substantive discussion on the on the commission's giving a better explanation of what they were looking for to be reflected in his submittals to explain the project activities in a more uh, understandable and not a complicated, confusing manner. So would Dave need to review those three meetings? No, he just needs to review the, the meeting night. that he was absent from, okay. which is why I have the DVD. And that's the July 9th. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that, and that doesn't sound like it were in your entire evening. <laughs> if you miss the next meeting for any reason, because on something that the kids, you wasted your time. Right. Yeah. Right. And you have to fill out this form to submit to the selectmen. Do I have to approve it? I'm just signing. I'm just no, no, no. He, he just has to do it, and he's then he, ad he attests yeah. under the penalties of perjury yeah. Yeah. that he's reviewing. Yeah, he um, and he just notes what it is he did review. In this case, it's a, a DVD which has both audio and video. And he's already has those plan sheets unless he's recycled them because they were subsequently replaced <laughs> by yeah. by plan sheets that you know yeah. had were more, more the, where the activities were dispersed on the different sheets instead of still right. concentrated yeah. on one. And he just submits them back to me, and then I attest and sign and put it in the file for the record. I actually have sheets available right here. So you say, I am a member of said board. I missed the uh, hearing session in the matter of, which was held on and put the date. I reviewed all evidence introduced at the hearing session I missed, which included a review of an audio recording, video recording, or a transcript. You just check the, the one that you review. And this certification shall become part of the records of the proceedings in the above matter. And then you sign it under pains and penalties of per perjury and, and date and your name and, and give it to me. And I just, put it as the keeper of the record, I just sign it in and put it in the record. Okay. So let's do it that way if that's agreeable to everybody. Um, so what I would want is a motion to I might need to, uh, to uh, continue this to the most April 15th meeting contingent upon uh, approval of the applicant otherwise to the March 25th meeting. Well, I think we should make a value try to get them to go to the, to the April 15th yeah. meeting. Yeah, well, I, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and you could explain to him that the, his attendance at the March 25th meeting. Well, this meeting will also hopefully provide Horsley and Witten to have reviewed yeah. so that when Horsley and Witten comes in to comment to us, they not only will be able to right. comment and review their first initial review of the project, but they should at that time then have been able to generate a response to Mr. DeCoulis's revisions. Um, and, to, maybe to that, and maybe that it will have even been given to Mr. DeCoulis yeah. uh, by that time. Right. So if that all happens by April 15th, perhaps we won't have to have two more meetings. Right. That would be great, possibly. <laughs> You look so skeptical. I wonder why. Yeah. I think we should um, order up a little trophy for Mr. Duple. All-time continuance champion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, 
might have to go and check that out. <laughs> I would prefer well, not to be prefer to the, uh, files to the defer on the longer term members, <laughs> but it's the longest in my tenure here. I mean, it's the most um, continuances in my tenure. Some of that Wilson Pond stuff went <laughs> on. Yeah. 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 Uh, some of the sites. Oh, no, I think I'm these. No, 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 no. All right. So, so, do I have a motion to that effect to so continue moved. this matter? And uh, is there a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Aye. Aye. So that's that. So I'm clear. Okay. Yep. If if it goes to if he doesn't want to do anything but March 25th, I have to do this. That's right. If it goes to April 15th, I do not. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Conceivably, you might still at some point. Yeah, yeah. But don't, understood. You don't okay. want to do it. I make the case that, yes, if you have the time, it would, be, it. It would be helpful for you to do it just because yeah. we, we don't know what other unintended or yeah. unanticipated right. things not a big may happen. But, but yeah. It's not a lot of time. I'd That's rather provide you with the option right. to do it than right. surprise you <laughs> at Later. some meeting and say, you really need to do this because now we're in a pickle. Like a clarification on the audio and, and visual aspect of this. The cameras provide an audio as well as visual. So I don't see a need to do both. I'm sorry. Do what do you mean? Do both? Listen, he just listen to that and listen to that. Listen no, no, he doesn't have he to. Does, he doesn't no. have to. It's got sound on the DVD. Right. I understand. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I but didn't that's say. an audio as well. Yeah, it's a that is correct. Secondary backup. Which you is why you have to listen to that as well. No, it, he doesn't have to. That's why it's multiple choice. Okay, that's, that's it's multiple choice yeah. on his affidavit. It's it's not you know do all or not. Mm -hmm. But he <laughs> could do just that. Could do just audio. Yeah. So you could go jogging he with could. some headphones. <laughs> <laughs> right. Preferably not because he missed that. That would be difficult. Like yeah, there you go. Yeah. In so the usual, saying, though, in the usual thoroughness of his of your agent, though, he would be well advised since I've marked on the backs of, of the DVD the exact timestamp. Yeah. So he only has to advance and listen to that particular section that. of the DVD. <laughs> yeah. not, not the rest of whatever we did that. But I, I hear what Kurt's saying because it says explicitly audio recording missed, hearing session, or video. There's no audio video. Or oh. just select like both of them. Well, I, I, I think it's implied. It is usually no implied that most all video yeah. recordings also include audio. Yeah. 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 You can handwrite that in video with audio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you read lips or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very right. Right. Let's move on. Yeah. Very yeah. few commissions document their meetings with, uh, with the silent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, administrative. <laughs> Um, oh. Proposed budget. I don't. Well, we actually, before we get into that, yeah, what else? Yeah, so oh, you have an initial request you for yeah, right. for payroll officers. Right. So <laughs> things we skipped at the beginning. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, we wanted to 
the, the next on the agenda was budget. renew the FY15 department <laughs> budget. Write a copy of. Or we've reviewed the draft of this before, I think. Or maybe it was just, just me. Just uh, curtain. No, I didn't yeah. Yeah. Well, curtain yourself. All right. So, yeah. find me. so at Debbie's suggestion, the expense item was bumped up to 2050. Or with her support, I guess I should say. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, do we need a vote on this? Um, is that too small? What's that? Well, it's up from 1600 It's a 25% and 26% increase. So, mm -hmm. well, it was, it was suggested that it be up to somewhere near 2000 To be quite honest with you, what I did is I looked, uh, so on on form three, I looked at um, the categories that where our expenses have been uh, centered before. Part of the reason, part of the reason for the increase is actually to move into the reality of that our our office phone expense, which is for one single phone line. Our budget has never been able to support that. I have always had to utilize um, some proportion of the notice of intent money. The problem with that is there is no way to provide substantiation that an expense like that is dedicated and predominantly based on Wetlands Protection Act activities, administration, or enforcement. And in fact, it obviously isn't because it's just it's just your day to day, normal it's office cool. expense to <laughs> yeah. be able to communicate with people. But the reality is is that is to the the tune of as I've estimated on here, um, seven hundred and fifty dollars um, with the with the cell phone um, allowance also in there. And so, so if that had been totally handled by our expense line, that was half. That was half the, the expense line that we that this department was previously allowed to have. Right. And so, creatively, um, you know, I I utilize some of the notice of intent monies in order just to be able to to be able to basically have the office operated at a bare minimum. Um, the reality is, is that our office, you know, when, when I first was employed here in July 2004, it was a 20 hour position. And I've been working at 40 hours for the town of Raleigh with increasing responsibilities uh, over the last um, seven years, I think. Six or seven years. I mean, we, we did step up. You're right. It was went pretty from 25, early on. went to 35, yeah so, yeah, so maybe for eight years anyway. Um, but with tight budgetary times, you know, we, we held the line on the budget and we utilized the notice of intent money yeah. as, as best we could. Um, but yes, I was uh, strongly encouraged by the town administrator to, to provide a, a more realistic budget. And yeah, I, uh, I, I would say I'd make it even more, but you know. Well, again, if you want to be realistic, yes, but you know, you got to at least put a being ten percent cushion on it. You know? Yeah, but I'm being realistic, but also recognizing the fact that that through appropriate application of a knowledge of the regulations and the uh, restrictions with the notice of intent monies, that there are things that the notice of intent monies can be used for. Mm -hmm. 
can so be used, used for the registration to go to the MACC um, conference. You yep. cannot use those monies <coughs> for dues to MACC. That is reflected here in the memberships of professional uh, professional societies or associations. Um, the MACC um, membership fee, I think, is uh, somewhere around four hundred and sixty dollars now for the town of Rallies, based on the population that the commission serves um, and how MACC um, assesses the dues. And the other proportion of monies reflected in that six hundred and fifty-five dollars is uh, membership in the. Uh, the Stormwater uh, Professionals Association, which has just recently undergone a name change, and I think it's now the Society of uh, Watershed Protection Professionals or something like that. So, um, obviously, stormwater has become an increasing uh, responsibility uh, for yes. both the commission as, as well as mine and working for the town. And so, I believe it's necessary to have membership with that. Um, that association gives me access to resources and stuff that is not available to MACC. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, you know, could could this budget request be more? Yes, but I'm a little hesitant to, um, you know, to just put more and more stuff on there. I think, you know, this is a realistic increase. I believe I can. Um, adequately justify every single dollar that is reflected on here. Um, um, but I don't believe that, uh, again, I believe that where appropriate, we can still utilize notice of intent monies for different trainings or... I just want to make sure you're not short. Well, you know, that's that's the big thing. I mean, that's, well, it, that's those are budgets anyway. It, you know? it is a 26.5% increase, so yeah. The, yeah, the idea is to make it more realistic. But we also had the smallest. I, I know. We had the smallest. Which is why Debbie, line of all town departments. Which is why Debbie came to us, essentially, and said, get realistic about this. Yeah. You should. And she was well, right. I think she's also trying to recognize the by increasing yeah. utilization for selectmen, planning board, yeah. Oh, I, I totally agree. Right. Which brings us to the next matter on the agenda, which is open space and rec plan update. Your new, <laughs> your new well, major. Do we need to oppose task. this budget? Or? Yeah, well, right, I don't want to skip over that. Do we need to vote on this budget? I, I, I think just to support it, I it needs right. to be reviewed by the FinCon right. and the Board of Selectmen. I don't think it's a formal submission by us in the sense. Well, it has been. It has already. I, I was requested to to submit it already, and I, and I did. The, but the approving bodies are the selectmen and the FinCom and the town meeting. Correct. So which is why I just said I think right. just indicating support for okay. for the submittal of this. So I think it, it'd be fair to say this budget has unanimous support from the members of the commission. Yes. Yes. yes right. Absolutely. Yeah. I. You know. Again. Not good. Than what you said. Yeah. yeah I mean. It, it, well, it's based on real situations and, and real uh, expenses. No, understood. You know, my only thing is, you know, if, if, if 2014, there are one, two, three, four, five items that were higher than they are now, you know, you might just want to keep that. <laughs> you know, just bring them across. We're not talking big bucks here. Well, at, to be quite honest with you, okay, office supplies and equipment is the first one. Went from $350 down to $200. Now, the reason for that is, is that the town has instituted a policy and passed separate articles for the purchase of computer equipment. In the past, I was told it was my obligation through my expense line to not only purchase a computer, but also printer, monitor, and stuff. And now I'm being told, and I have submitted a capital uh, budget request for showing periodic replacement of the office computer equipment uh, because that's where I was advised that the town wanted to see those purchases so that's, so that's moved into quote unquote capital expenditures, which we had not had before. Right. So there's a different budget for that. Right. Yeah. Right, as well as they wanted to plan for the future, so I gave them, you know, an estimated cycle as to when I feel I should be replacing the computers in the office. Um, so that is why that line decreased. Um, 
Well, it's, you know. So the other de decrease, education workshops and books, that again is a an actual reflection that a lot of the uh, workshops, conferences and stuff I have gone to recently can be, um, the cost registrations and stuff can be uh, appropriately dispensed through the notice of intent monies. That's not to say that there isn't, which is why I left $50 there, because sometimes I go to um, it's an organization called Bay State Roads that does workshops. Most of their workshops are geared to DPW uh, transportation-oriented people, but because stormwater is part of transportation infrastructure, every so often they have stormwater workshops, and their usual registration fee is about $50, so that's why that's there. The mileage, yes, the mileage, you could always increase the mileage figure and whatever, but in this instance, um, again, I thought it was better to not be unrealistic, but to just reflect where I thought I could hold things um, at a bare minimum. But I, you know, to be honest with you, lots of times I combined site walks in the coming into town. So it's part of my commute into town. And I don't feel comfortable creating something artificial by saying that I went on a site visit and traveled a certain yeah. one or two miles when in fact right. I'm doing it on my trip in, yeah. which I would be doing every day right. anyway. Or my trip out of town. And you so could be charging and that I could mileage. Be, I could, could be, be charging be. it for that mileage. And, and, and what is the rate? Per mile is somewhere around 55. I, I'd have to look up. The federal it. rate's like 56 per mile. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's somewhere around that. Okay. Would that all public servants were so dedicated, right? Mm -hmm. no. I, I know, to, just, you know. I'm I, trying to be realistic. I know it's the same thing with the postage. The reason the postage decreased is because when I'm sending permits out for the permits that are issued under the Wetlands Protection Act, this commission does make it a practice of issuing dual permits, both under the local bylaw as well as under the Wetlands Protection Act. But most of my, that is when most of my postage expense occurs because sending a permit, certified return receipt, is between six and seven dollars now. But if it's a Wetlands Protection Act permit, I can appropriately charge that money to the notice of the account because that's part of the administration of the Wetlands Protection Act, is mailing someone the permit um, and getting proof that you did it. Property management, that's actually a pie in the sky. Yes, um, the reason it's expressed is 50 to, well, let me explain. Our property management expenses have actually seldom ever gone over $10 because they've been basically focused on um, locks, when I replace locks on the kiosk, when I replace lock on the gate or whatever, so I hardly ever spent very much money in that. But, but I actually, signage. but I've planned, yeah, and hopefully with your support, and I've planned for this upcoming season for us to do a little rejuvenating work on the kiosk at uh, Pingree Farm Conservation Area on Boxford Road and also at Hunsley Hills which hopefully will involve the purchase of some uh, linseed oil stains and brushes or whatever for us to do it a, a go over with linseed oil to mm -hmm. keep up its, it's they're in good shape I don't want to see them deteriorate um, type thing so that's actually why that's there as well as if we get into a couple of signposts or whatever you know that type of thing uh, shouldn't be that expensive and the registry services um, Again, that's kind of a guess. Um, we did spend $125. That isn't, you know, it isn't an always for certain thing that we would be recording a deed. That's why there was $125 expended that time. I usually anticipate that it, it would be, you know, $75 is um, the recording fee. Like if you have to record an enforcement order or something like that. Um, I don't feel comfortable taking that money out of the notice of intent 
account because, to be honest with you, what we've done in the past is when we've done that and then finally gotten somebody to resolve things, we've requested that they reimburse us. Yeah, and the recording fee that. is as yeah. part of their resolution of the enforcement matter, so I just put it there again just to, because it was an expense that we had um, expensed in, in FY14, but I wasn't sure that every single year we would always be spending 125, but the bare minimum is 75. Well, I, I, I know nobody really likes talking about budgets, and it can be boring. And I'm sorry for taking everybody's time on that, sure. but you know, my main thing is, you know, if it, you need an operational budget to be able to do what you got to do, yeah. and if you've reached these limits, the high water marks. I just bring them over. Yeah. But that's my suggestion. Yeah. Right. I understand reality. But well, and, and also understand that just because there's a particular category there, if it turns out that I don't have that particular category for an expense, it doesn't doesn't mean that that money then, quote unquote, isn't utilized. Yeah. Okay. It can then be used for something you else. You can transfer it around. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I just. I just, I just felt that I would feel more comfortable supporting categories of expenses by being able to say, well, yeah, we did expend yeah. this much for that. Yeah. You've got to make a line items. Yeah. How much money do we have in the NLI account? Roughly. Off the top of my head, I believe there's $11,000. <clears throat> Anything else? Yeah. 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 A little bit. That's because the commission chose to um, use a substantial amount of money to purchase pictometry for the town. Okay. The good news is is that the selectmen voted, and there should be an article appearing on this coming town warrant for the town to be making an authorized uh, expenditure for the acquisition of the pictometry yeah. if Merrimack Valley Plain Commission chooses to fly. If they get enough people to to have a flight this coming spring. So that won't come out of our budget. No, no we're going to it will not be coming out of any department's budget right, yeah. because it technically is a resource that is that can be utilized by almost all the town departments. Right, right, right. I think Council on Aging is the only one that doesn't have any use for it. <laughs> that could be tough Well, no, why are you looking at me when you say that? Uh, <laughs> because I don't feel I comfortable talking to a group. <laughs> I was always taught that when you're talking to folks, you should at some point in time make eye contact with everyone in your audience. Yeah. So instead of you getting my shoulder all the time, I thought I should at least look at you. But it had nothing to do with uh, categorizing you. He was just trying to engage you with I the topic. I thought that, was that going to be done this past year? Um, they requested a commitment. They're trying to uh, seek the... Uh, Base number of towns they that have they to get need enough towns to, yeah, buy to fly yeah, this coming I, spring. Uh, but this spring, I yeah, thought it was going to be done last around spring. Around April 2014. Yeah, it wasn't done last spring. Then. No, it was not. Okay. No. It had been done in 2012. Yeah. yeah. We usually do try to wait at least two years, if not three. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anything further on the budget? Good. Open space and rec plan update. Friends, new job. Actually, you gave us something on this. Too. I gave you something. You so, so it is. Uh, the, the town has been told that it is more than likely an imperative and will be a requirement for the town. They have at least made a. Uh, demonstrable effort to renew their open space and rec plan which expired in 2008. We had an open space committee that was working on this. Um, for whatever reason, it's not clear progress was made on it, but never reached the uh, goal, the goal line, which was producing a draft, which then needs to be circulated to uh, all town departments as well as uh, some committee needs to hold a public hearing um, and entertain discussions and comments and review of the draft as, as well as uh, provide a body that 
is exercising some oversight uh, over uh, this process. And it's because of the consideration of possible purchase of the Girl Scout property that this has become, uh, that this needs to be finished. And I didn't know if we might want to just consider it sort of like uh, doing minutes, like reviewing minutes. So uh, our senior service person, Gene Blanchard, and I spent uh, over two hours this morning uh, going through the, uh, the introductory um, pages and then what was presented to us as a revised section one and a revised section two we didn't do very much tweaking to section one, uh, but Gene and I did do a substantial amount of editing to section two, as well as as you look at it and review it, I'd like to discuss with you the ending of that section. Anything labeled section one. Oh, yes, sir. Sorry. Wants to read this now? Would that be okay? <laughs> when you say the end of section two, do you mean 2.1, 2, 2.3? Well, it would be at the bottom of what's tagged as page three, yeah, and okay. then the top of page four. Mm -hmm. All right. Part of where the, part of where all the elbow grease uh, that Gene and I applied to this today was we found that the listing of accomplishments was not arranged in any type of what we thought was logical order and we thought that possibly um, tying a year to when the activity occurred that therefore putting it in some type of chronological order would seem to make the most sense starting from when the first plan, the 2003 to 2008 plan, uh, was put forth, we felt it appropriate that a lot of the activities and um, accomplishments that occurred starting in 2003, that they should be at the start of the list of accomplishments. <coughs> and so we're back to 2.3. Yes, on 2.3. Page 2. Yeah. Yeah, page two, going on to page three. Um, their original list, I believe, ended at either number 14 or number 15. We expanded it to 16 points. Um, and, then, and then for whatever reason, I actually would seek the commission's okay to delete the last. The last three items in the in its introductory paragraph. What are you talking about? On the bottom of page three, after after the uh, chronological or numerical listing, the uh, 16th. Um, yeah. Oh, you mean okay. Achievement for whatever reason they felt they wanted to quote unquote express set what they termed as setbacks. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Why is that in there? And. and and first off, number one that they call the setback is actually, I think, inappropriately listed <coughs> as being a setback. Right? That's all in how you look at it. Well, I, I was kind of up to my yeah. knees in it, so I... Right. <laughs> no, I agree. But what, why would we have that in there anyway? Right. Yes. And then I don't even understand uh, the listing of, of two and three, uh, although I... Certainly don't. I, I beg... And you should. I beg ignorance on number three, but uh, to me, if you have an open space and recreation plan, you can only possibly look at, quote unquote, the loss of open space. It's conversion into, you know, some kind of developed, um, overbuilt area would, quote unquote, be a setback. And I'm not aware that um, Cricket Hill Herb Farm has turned into a multifamily housing or a paved it's over shopping mall. It ever was. It's a business. business. Um, and then I'm not sure, even no, I don't have any knowledge at all yes, about sir. the closure of a miniature rose farm. I, I know. That happened. And did it that? turn into yes, a developed area? Yeah. Uh, so if it's an undeveloped uh, area and just a private. What's the part of the park? No, 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 no,
the but the, I think the point of having that in there is that where it mentions major objectives, one of, the, one of them is to encourage agricultural uses. And those closures discouraged agricultural uses. So I can see why I was included for that, but I think that's bygones at this point. Yeah, I think that should all come out. That's fine. The other thing that just threw me when I first looked at this, it says 2014 on the front, but the acknowledgement <laughs> is uh, seriously out of date. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. On, on the other, business well, okay, and, and this is exactly why, this is why I wanted to have a discussion with the commission. In one, in one sense, there needs to be some recognition. I believe that these people did work. I mean, I was given revised sections, which obviously showed that someone had spent some time in the effort. I know that a survey and a public hearing on getting input from the citizens, I know that that step was undertaken. So, yeah, um, I, I certainly would not presume that the way this acknowledgement page reads is the way it, it should read as just a blanket thing all by itself, but I think there probably should be some way of at least um, so why not partially just, expressing that these why folks not? were involved in the... Why not Start. just change it to the list of them and say that they were? You say they say were that involved they, in the re revision well, effort from two thousand and yes, ten yes, to two thousand and twelve, yes. when or which is when I believe they were added. That they provided input of something of that nature. Well, disregard the uh, the statement that they are members of this open space committee, which is. Not currently operative. Right. Also, I think this update has to come out because this update, dated 2014, is not the result of their efforts. Maybe partially it is, but Lane hasn't lived in town for a year and yeah. a half. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Well, that, that's why I said, if anything, well, one could only credit them from 2010 to 2012. Right. Well, why don't, you, add, why was don't you add your name to the list and then just these people have been. Been helpful. Key in, yeah. yeah. In right. coming up with this. Right. Well, you can word it much better than that, but. Right. You can do it generically and say acknowledge the efforts of the prior members of the Open Space Committee. Yeah, right. that would be good too. Right. Judy, do the Moses still live in town? Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. told me recently that they had moved out of town. Yeah. Oh, that so. surprised me. Yeah. The house hasn't been for sale. Yeah. <coughs> Glad to hear this still around. Some of these others, I don't know. The um, Brent, I think your idea of um, a chronological ordering of this makes a lot of sense. That's helpful reading through it. You could also add, could you not, the um, acceptance of the land from the bank that we were just talking about? Yeah. yeah. And um, wasn't there another thing like that? Could also, the yeah, uh, donation of yeah, the land on Hayward That's Street fine. too. Right. That's well, right. I would on, under two point one after the second paragraph, you could stick in another paragraph. Um, and you, I mean, that second paragraph talks about we have lost acreage and things like that. You can say that during this time as well, uh, um, various things happened to increase the availability of open space under protection of the town, including the, the Audubon, the whole Audubon thing, uh, the Bradford Street Farm, um, those two or three parcels that have recently 
um, you know, that we've dealt with, including the one that Audubon just took credit for in the email you sent us today. Um, we sent Doug and I. <laughs> I. I think there's some pluses that offset. Yeah. That offset the yeah, sorry. Yeah. You could just refer to 2.3 for the detail on those accomplishments and pluses. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, which I haven't, I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not, everything hasn't been a loss. There have been some big gains here. I don't think they have to be toted up exactly, but no, well, no. But you're you're absolutely right. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna say, well, there was some increasing development, I think there's absolutely also nothing wrong to saying there was some increasing efforts at preservation and conservation. Very right. successful, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the ice pond thing we just picked up. Oh, that's the other one I was trying to think of. I think there's one more. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the one from Mr. Breen. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there something on Weathersfield, too, that was part of it? Was the well, that's the back of the wing. What, the what the scout, what the yeah. scout, yeah. what, that's what Eric is like to yeah, take the sample. Wasn't there a family that came in there that was a some yeah. property that was uh, up on the corner of Hillside. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was Hillside. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, on Hillside, oh, okay, on hillside part of the cataray. Yes, we are <coughs> actually also got. Right. Yeah, 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 that's right. So there's, so there's the a third. The, uh, the Mill River. <coughs> River. Oh, the Mill River. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's the one. Well, yeah, he, he was part the of the cataray family. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Right. Right. And there's what about that? There's a section right out of Cross Street, right? The Jellison. The, un the undeveloped portion, uh, but there's nothing you know that's nothing that's no, been but there is the preserved or protected that I'm aware of. What about the the uh, big chunk of land on um, hillside uh, right next to Weldon Farm Road that? Got foreclosed on and then gifted to well Greenbelt yeah. to Greenbelt mm -hmm. yeah well I think Greenbelt actually bought it yeah well gifted a foreclosure paid, sale yeah on a foreclosure from sale yeah they probably yeah. did pay for it but an enormous yeah. amount of positive things that right well yeah, well yeah well, well uh, that's that's why I said Gene and I were spending a lot of time on right trying. but all these it were surprising sense. actually how much land has <coughs> been acquired for yeah. open space in recent years here yeah. And we should really mention them all. Well, we don't get credit for all of them, but right. no. But well, any well, we work. We, but it's, we, an, we open, it's an open space plan. It it's not just the town. The, the, yeah. the plan is that everybody needs to acquire open space, yeah. right? Not right. just us. Green Belt, Audubon, anybody, right? Face I just mentioned yeah. is Why am I great in deer it? habitat. Because oh, we have so no, many deer this year. Uh, <laughs> I got home this afternoon at 5.15 and there were eight deer within 30 feet of my back door. We had 26 were, one day. You know, <laughs> six deer? Are you sure you didn't sit with two or turkeys on a Sunday? <laughs> Yeah, my demand of being able to be sure my eight were in your twenty six because they don't live that far from each other. Not, not the but these guys were close. Oh they yeah, really close. cross street from this here to so that door, yeah. standing there looking <coughs> in my back door. Yeah, yeah, a couple looking of them stepped out in the street and saw me by your house. Not, not to bring it close the street. And it was, it was daylight. More cross street. Oh, I've seen a lot of red staining on Route One. Yeah. Yeah, like that well, is obviously a large in Conley's. Mm -hmm. No, no. no. Yeah. So so this this is the Conley land. Okay. Oh, so okay. okay. All right. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. There's there's a a chunk chunk really should There's yeah. a chunk in there. Yeah. 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 It's all wet. It's very icy. And I swear, okay, I can't get through it at all to town. 
That's, that's what it is. Yeah, that's fun. They have an hot dog. Sorry, it's watching the watching Grover's yard. It's right next to Grover's. Oh, they're standing on top of this. I think they did, but I'm not sure. They can't bring it to the ice. But I thought that one is poor closure. That's very hard. They escaped. Yeah, that's right. They couldn't do anything with it. They abandoned them in the street the other day. I'll have to look it up to try to prove that they were homeless. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened just because I haven't heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> so glad to talk to you first. Bottom of page one, Brent. The last uh, sentence uh, of the section two. Yes. Okay. I'd just say this committee meets. I take out the regularly working aggressively. Just say meets to preserve. <laughs> <laughs> regularly working aggressively. The most you're comfortable. Yeah. Now that committee. It's a little salesmanship there. Regularly working and aggressive. That's the last time the master plan was updated. Well, anyway, and just so you, you all aren't surprised about it, it was requested of the selectmen at their meeting last night to designate. Conservation Commission as the interim open space. Open space. So I hope right. <coughs> Brent all, went over that you are disappointed in if there really didn't seem to but be what any exactly alternatives. What happened to it? Did the people just yeah. resign or Suspend? give up? Or <laughs> they what? stopped being able to adequately coordinate themselves and have and have meetings where a quorum was present in order to do anything. That's as much as I know. I think it would be helpful if the selectmen can figure out some way to aggressively supplement our membership to the level it should be. Uh, still, you mean this commission? Yes, if we're going to take on this kind of work, we need to, you know, they need to do something proactively to come up with another commission. And, you know, sticking something at the end of Michelle's column periodically doesn't seem to do the trick or putting it on the town's website. Um, well, okay, I have been... I'm still trying to get a handle on what needs to be done. I will admit I probably I thought meeting tonight requesting the selectmen to consider designating the Conservation Commission as the interim open space committee would accomplish two things that probably couldn't get done in any other way. The first thing was to provide me with some type of authority that would be able to justify my now working on this where it was obvious that finished product didn't appear to have been the result of folks doing it on a volunteer basis. Can I say that without being sure. overly critical of because you know, I am not a citizen of this town, but I'm very respectful of people who do give their time to be on boards and stuff. But um, so that was that was one thing. The other thing was the fact that not just by quote unquote bringing me as a hired gun to be able now to actually effectively work on this. The other thing is that there needs to be somebody that can direct. Um, if this does get assembled, which I hope is going to be the case in a timely manner, into a draft product, there then needs to be a public hearing with a legal ad as well as the distribution. Now, I don't know what the impact of any financial resources may be to this, but I believe it hasn't been specifically said to me, but I believe I am to communicate any needs like that to the selectmen. I don't believe there's going to be any impact to the commission's fund, funding or, or, or our, our meager expense line or anything like that. Uh, the other thing is I was also I advised, to get I've also been, the supplies. well, I've also been, <laughs> now, now again, to reflect that it, it isn't the fact that nothing has been done. There has been some things done. And I think, although I'm not sure, Merrimack Valley Planning Commission did revise some maps for the Open Space Committee. 
I have to figure out if what needed re revision did get revised, and then I've been authorized by the Board of Selectmen for any addition, well, within reason, any additional time commitment from Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. I just have to, would have to find out what it is because the, the maps don't have the proper um, text on them giving uh, whatever figure they're supposed to be for an insertion into the sections. You know, figure 3-1 for in use in section 3. So that the kind of thing. Just yeah, so, so there's still, it might just be the fact of putting text yes. onto the map and not actually do any mapping, per se. Thing, but again, I just recently got the pieces that Does exist that get together. Is that part of this? No, the town has, the town is a member of Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, has the right or allotment of a certain amount of their planning hours or whatever. And so I've already been authorized that it's okay, but I do have to figure out what needs to be done, find out from Merrimack Valley Planning Commission how many hours they think that would be, and make sure the town has that, because I've been told I'm already authorized to use it. But I also was advised that if I find out there's a substantial amount of some kind of effort or work product that I am to communicate to the selectmen and see whether a consultant or something needs to be hired to finish it. But Unfortunately, you know, when you drop out of the sky in the middle of something that's partially done, you've got to gather the pieces together, then figure out what was done, and it what seemed to me that Gene and I could make substantial progress on this second section, which is why I brought it to you tonight, as well as then this would also fulfill the obligation for a committee in town having looked at it and not just Gene and I saying, oh yeah, this looks okay. Well, I think it's going to be the, the public notice for the, the the public hearing on it is going to be under our auspices. Yes. That's the clear request of the selectmen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it behooves us to participate in its revision. Well, right. We could schedule one of our regular meetings for that purpose. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. right. our special meeting. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. nothing to say. The, no, we'll the public just... hearing can't be advertised on yeah. a day Some, that is already. Someday we have a mm -hmm. not too long agenda. And there probably won't be a lot of public comment. I mean, who, who opposes open space in this town? Well, no, so and from the and there's yeah. their survey work <laughs> and their <laughs> public hearing. The, the committee <laughs> that was operating did have a public okay. survey, a public meeting, and did get get public input, right. um, validating you know what previously the citizens in Raleigh had had said, which was that preservation of open space and conservation of natural resources and protection of water uh, was a primary concern. Something else I'll toss out for your consideration and um, you may want to find a way to work in some mention of the uh, establishment uh, within the last few years of the Great Marsh Garden Club and the efforts they do to, to help to, to promote and beautify the, the uh, available space within Raleigh various places around town. Are they a group that's centered on rally or are they switch around or regional? Yeah. Oh, it's, um, it's mostly rally. They're the folks who hold the plant sale at the uh, market basket every spring. And they do the star garden and the and the and the plantings in front of the post office. And plus there are some private people that, that you know like I don't know, take care of these little colored <laughs> little um, areas in the middle of intersections that, yeah. that advertise and beautify it. all of that works together. And might even there may even be a way to work in the uh, Chamber of Commerce into some comments in more Illinois. They put up signs calling attention to some of Raleigh's resources. <laughs> Those are fair comments. <laughs> Where did you put the signs to the Chamber of Commerce? I don't know, they put some. 
What's that sign recently put up? That I can't remember what it said, but it draws attention to the downtown, the uh, public landing. Um, I can't want to know else before people veer off and head for Ipswich. Yeah. Suggest oh, that they might consider yeah. going left for Raleigh. Oh, it's not 133, but it pays me that dog. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for those of us. I will say I virtually never I, I don't section. either. I always just Bradford Street. <laughs> <laughs> Something that might be useful is probably also an open space can kind of be a compendium of <coughs> Places of walking trails and park areas within the town of Broadway. There's no place you can go that I know of that says, well, here's Huntsley Hills, and yes. here's, a, here's a place through these, this section of town and that section of town. I think that would be a. I think there is something like that in here. But it could be incorporated mm -hmm. into it. It's I'm not there. Hoping it's already there. Okay. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, even the golf course, although it's not us, it's, you know, there's the. Conservation restriction. That's a good point. Yeah. It's a, a yeah. new public space. Yeah. And um, Rough Meadows is new since mm -hmm. this was last done. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, and Rough Meadows was mentioned in here. Yes. Yeah. Rough Meadows was number 16. That's right. Yeah. But if, it's, if it isn't mentioned in the compendium of walking areas, it should be. So is there support in regards to my desire of the bottom of page three of removing oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. those, yeah, those that's three right. items? Yeah, yeah. In that, okay. <coughs> Two of them are private property. Well, they don't even make but they are, you know, I, I didn't understand them because, again, yeah. it wasn't like they got developed, which I would have thought. I, you know, I, I just don't just understand take them it at all. I was totally unaware that anyone was interested. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So if I could have, so if I could have a motion to uh, revise the sections as discussed. Is there a motion? A move. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all against. And the motion carries. It was actually no snow showing on the. The golf course Great. with my son, my son and daughter. Great. Great. Ice chewing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Falling. <laughs> I even mentioned the frozen establishment frozen. of a yeah. private yeah. vineyard in Rome. Yeah. Uh, private public. Two or three acres. Nice. Growing grapes there. <laughs> Sam, have you been up to the jewelry? And I'm assuming it's part of the. Oh, well, yes. But uh, I actually have been for quite a while. You should go again. It's, I've been for quite a while. Activities that are going on out there. He's working away. At I don't know what quite holes they are. Well, where are you going to do The first ones and then the back ones. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Which? There are Jewel mounds towers. of top Oh, yeah. Of course yeah. I've been there. Okay, good. On I just, the green. I was there a couple of... Well, yeah, that along yeah. the... I figured you had. I just along wanted to make sure. The real gem. The wooded... The tree lines. Yeah, is it close? That's it. Interesting. Yeah, there's no. Yes. It, it could be there's sorry, just a. Uh, there's signs that are insulated yeah. greens, yeah. you know, and keep it from you getting know, But they're not on the green green. It, they're off along the, the, the wooded uh, you know, right. lines, the you know, borders. Why would they be stockpiled on top? All the way down there. Way down there. Yeah. Status permits and reform and enforcement. You got any? I don't know. Actually, I don't have too, to too much to like them say in regards to that. It is for provide uh, everyone yeah. with handouts uh, mm -hmm. from my participation at the MAC conference and reviews of yeah, thank you. one is a little bit of old news, the review of the regulatory changes from 2012, but the other one is um, uh, a summary of some of the discussions in the latest effort of regulatory reform, which DEP had their hearings and stuff back in last year, early last year. They're anticipating the possibility of April when they'll have public hearings um, and actually have issued uh, the revisions. Um, unfortunately, now the MACC conference, you don't get handouts. Um, 
of the presentations. They are going to put them online because they believe you should be getting this stuff electronically, but that means lots of times I won't see any of the workshop presentations until a month from now. Um, the small good news that came out of the um, almost hour and a half long discussion about the proposed regulatory changes is that in the buffer zone area where they had a proposal to not require a permit if you were expanding the footprint of your structure by 50%, uh, they apparently received overwhelming negative comments that that should be done without permit review uh, as they had proposed. <coughs> Yes. Mm. Yes. Now, again, this they were just commenting to us about their initial going through the public comments and things that were, were shaking out or, or whatever. There still was no recognition on their part as to how allowing activities within the buffer zone uh, with people that didn't have to come before the Conservation Commission and have any type of review at all about how they would possibly know where the delineated border and vegetated wetlands line would be and therefore know if they were 50 feet or more away from it uh, without any type of input from the Conservation Commission or the Conservation Agent. They still did not provide any substantiation that they had figured out how to overcome that hurdle in their regulations. So we still may be surprised with them issuing some type of good intentions, but something that might not be appropriately implemented on the ground. <laughs> Practical. So. <clears throat> but, but anyway, there was a summary sheet. Those are helpful, actually. Yeah. Friend, it does, uh, notes from the various sessions in the NACC meeting available to everyone? No. They suppose, what they normally will do is they'll send an email out to um, people who had who you know, confirmed membership and they'll give us a yeah. password or whatever. So just let me know whatever your interest is. Okay. Um, download it and get it to you. I, I like, of course, like all presentations, you know, sometimes just well, looking at the slides doesn't, doesn't give help. you um, the substance of, of yeah. the content. I, I will tell you that I changed my um, attendance at some workshops, um, not because I had any good premonition that it would be useful, but at the last minute I decided to accompany Mike DeRosa and go to the um, Agricultural Activities and Wetlands workshop, which you'd think I would have enough of that stuff and not want to go to a workshop on it, but anyway. Um, I went to it and it was partially um, some folks and some attorneys talking about the perspective from the Wetlands Protection Act, uh, but then there was two, um, uh, two folks uh, from the Army Corps of Engineers there who had um, the basic message I got from them was the fact that, well, your agricultural activity may be exempt on the local level, it may be exempt on the state level for the Wetlands Protection Act, but you really should call the Army Corps of Engineers because not true. everything is exempt through them it's under true. Section 404, which is the Clean Water Act. Whoa, whoa. And they also had the story, too, that that Phil? That's what I'm thinking it, of. Is it not Phil if it didn't come from off-site? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> if you move dirt around on your property and you didn't truck it in, it's not so. and you deposit it in waters of the <laughs> of the Commonwealth or these United States or wetlands of these United States, it's still fill, <laughs> even if you didn't truck it in. <laughs> Just moved it from one area of your property. Right. If you bulldozed your hill and bulldozed it mm -hmm. into the low part and filled the filled it's the wetlands, filled. and those are federally jurisdictional wetlands, mm -hmm. you filled wetlands. Okay. It's still fill. Mm -hmm. you fill it under our local. Whether you whether you got it from somewhere else, whether you imported it or not. So apparently they had had recent experience yeah. <laughs> that led them to say that because they don't usually impart those specific pearls of wisdom unless they just had a major enforcement act or something that, that involved that. 
But anyway, the bottom line was that what whatever applicant who believes they're engaged in an app in a agricultural activity that isn't jurisdictional or regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act, that it may be regulated and they may need a permit under the Army Corps of Engineers through the Federal Clean Water Act. Dude still running for representative? Who's that? What's that? What's his name? The, uh, the oh, the lawyer? Yeah, the lawyer that was representing the Mullen. Oh, uh, starts with K. Yeah, Kittenstein. Kill coin or something? Uh, mm -hmm. Jim Kalkors. Kalkors. That's mm -hmm. right. He lost wonder, his what, wonder what would happen there. He, 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 he ran for state representative oh, to, and yeah. did not win. Yeah. He, he made the papers recently on something else that he was involved Yeah, he's an Ainsbury town yeah. selectman or town council yeah. member. Yeah. Town council yeah. member. Um, so he's, his name's often in the papers. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody? Brent, anything else we need to talk about? Mm. Not currently. Um, as you can see, I am waiting for uh, Massachusetts Audubon Society to uh, provide us with a draft yep. uh, conservation restriction for the Bradstreet. Sure, they will. Yeah. <coughs> I think they just announced it in their newsletter. Well. And that suggests you might need to take that into account in revising this. Yes, yes, because it's well, I there is none. <laughs> well, I, we, under we I, under that out. I understand that. I, yes, I wanted to take that out. I don't necessarily, this has got to have an ending, a stopping and ending point, and I would like to use the end of 2013 right. as the ending point uh, because I need to get. I need to get this thing into, or figure out how to get it as soon as possible into something that can be yeah, put no, together no, and distributed. Just, that's fine. just say that the town is progressing towards um, agreeing upon the terms of a conservation easement with Max Audubon. And it's all to say, no, say it's done because it won't be done. But we are progressing. At the end of 2013, we were progressing. We shall continue. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Sounds like we shall. So moved. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> in favor? Aye. 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 The motion, and the motion carries, and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>